All right, in this quick video, I'm going to talk about the difference between what we typically call 230 or 240 volt split phase, um, although we often just call it single phase, or 208. And with 208 volts, we know that we see this more in commercial applications, so techs who work more in light commercial applications will often see 208. <music> So let's talk about what each one is. When you have a regular residential application or any single phase application, you're taking one phase out of three from the power company. And that one phase is going into the transformer out of the street or could be ground, could be up on the pole. And they're splitting that phase into two separate discrete phases with a center tap. And that center tap is the neutral. So neutral going to the structure goes to the center, and then it wraps in opposite directions from the center outwards. And you have two different phases that are directly 180 degrees out of phase from one another. So imagine take a circle, split it in half, you have 180 degrees, and they're always directly opposing. As they reach the center, they go to zero though. So when they're on the far sides, they oppose one another, but then as they come back together, they cross. And you can see this in a simple sine wave. Or if you imagine two circles that are split in half and they're rotating in opposite directions, um, they're going to come together at one point every cycle when they hit that, that center point. And actually what we call that is the zero point. So anyway, that's how single phase works is we take a single phase from the power company, one phase out of three, it's directly 180 degrees out of phase from one another when we split it in half. And that's how we get 240 volts, often called 230. That's an older way of describing it back when voltages were lower. I mean, people still call it 220. And that's basically for the same reason that people will still call it 110 or 115 or 120. Higher voltages are more common nowadays because it actually reduces line losses, makes it a little more efficient. And so they've slowly increased the voltages over the years where nowadays we'll even see voltages in a lot of places that's, you know, 245, 246 even. That single phase that we generally see in residential that's really split phase. So we take a single phase and we split it in half into two separate phases with that neutral in the middle. But in the case of 208, 208 really isn't single phase. 208 is actually two phases. We're taking two phases out of three. So you have a building that has three phases of power coming into the panel. And when we use a breaker that goes across in the bus bar across two of those legs, you don't get 240, even though each one of the legs is 120 volts thereabouts to neutral. The reason is, is because those legs are not 180 degrees out of phase. They are 120 degrees out of phase. Now, in my previous video, I kept saying 90 degrees out of phase for some reason. Don't ask me why. I say a lot of dumb things sometimes, but it's 120 degrees out of phase. So imagine if you took a circle and you split it into three pieces of the pie, all of those pieces would be 120 degrees out of phase from one another, which means that if you look at the sine wave of two they're not directly opposed from one another. And so you don't get that full potential difference from one leg to the other, which is why you only see 208. From a very practical standpoint, when you're using 208 to power a motor or an appliance that's designed for 208 or 240, you're generally not going to get the full capacity or the full output. Um, in order to do the same job. So an example would be if you take a typical single speed, single phase condensing unit and you put it on 208 versus 240, you're going to get lower capacity out of that unit. Now, a lot of people wrongly assume that you're going to also see higher current. Um, that's rarely the case. There are cases that you will uh, in cases where the motor is actually going to compensate for that, like, for example, with a variable frequency drive or an ECM. But most of the single phase PSC type of motors that we work on, if you put them on that lower voltage, they'll actually draw lower current and they'll do less work. So there'll be less wattage on the circuit and they'll also produce less BTUs in capacity, which is a thing that a lot of people forget when they're working with a 208 appliance. Another thing that happens when you're working with 208 is that motors tend to struggle to start more often. And so it's going to be more likely that you have to use a hard start kit, for example. Or you may find that voltage drop on the line that wouldn't have been a problem in 240 does become a problem with 208 because you're already low. So you're starting low and then additional voltage drop becomes more of an issue with running the compressor or the motors. So with 208, you have to be careful. You have to think about whether or not your system is going to still have the capacity it needs. And you have to be more careful with the voltage drop. It's going to be more likely on single phase PSC. You've got to use hard start kits, that sort of thing. 
thing. Again, read the manual from the manufacturer and do what they suggest, but this is just a practical thing that we find. And another thing, when you're working in commercial applications, make sure to retap those transformers based on the voltage that you have. Some people will say, well, I don't have 208, I have 212 or I have 215 or something like that. And that's just sort of like how we say 230 versus 240. You're going to see that the voltages are actually higher than 208 nowadays just because the voltages are actually higher than 240 as well coming into the device. So you're not always going to see that 208. You may see higher. And in fact, you normally will see higher, um, which by itself is not is not a problem at all. So anyway, main thing to know here is that when we say single phase in terms of residential 240, we're talking about one phase that we split into two. We call that split phase. And then you also have 208, which is actually two phases of the incoming three phase from the power company. Hopefully that helps. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing, you can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.